Homie, what is going on? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Thank you so much for being here. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through a full follow along individual session that you can do by yourself. All you need is a ball, a wall, a water bottle, maybe a couple cones and a will to work hard. As you're going to see, there's about 50 to 60 exercises. I voice recorded every single exercise. You will see how long to do each exercise. You can completely follow along with each exercise or you can watch the exercise, pause the video, time yourself for about 30 to 60 seconds, do the exercise with as high as quality as possible and then move on to the next exercise. As you're going to see, it's structured exactly like a Rick Fit app session will be structured. The app is hopefully going to come out in one to two months. I've been working on it for about two and a half years, as you know. It's one of the best things that I've ever done. It's a massive project. So I just wanted to show you a sample app session that I got directly from the app that I programmed for all my beta users. I have about 50 beta users on the app right now, which are users that are basically trying out the app and they're letting me know if there are any bugs, anything that I should fix to make the app as perfect as possible. These are clients that I've had in the past clients that I have at the moment and some friends who play football. So you're going to enjoy this session. As you're going to see, it's structured in a way that's proper, exactly like on the app. we got dynamic warm-up, mobility. We do ball work, first touch, aerial control, and then we finish off with some core work. As always, work as hard as you can at the highest intensity possible with the highest quality possible. Enjoy the video and I'll see you at the end. Like I said, I will be walking you along this full follow along individual football session that you can do anywhere you find space. So as always, we start off with a nice dynamic warm up. We did a jog, we did some butt kicks, we did forward shuffles. Now we're getting into some backward shuffles, really opening up those hips. Then we get into some hamstring sweeps, really open up those hamstrings, really helpful for the lower back. Then we get into some backwards hip shifts, which is very useful to open up those hips, really get some nice mobility and fluidity within those hips. And then we go into some single leg high knees. So very, very simple, just driving that knee up, coordinating the arm with the leg. And then we're coming back following with double high knees. Then we get into some arms swiveling across, really opening up the upper body, specifically the shoulders, the scapula, the neck, everything that's involved in running and training. The whole body is one unit, remember that. Then we get into some double leg butt kicks, very good for the quads and the hamstrings. Go next into reverse lunge with a twist. Some karaoke's to really open up the hip joints, really get some looseness into the hips, really open up that entire body, especially the groins and the hips. Then we get into some knee hugs, very good for the hip flexors, the psoas, then we get into a forward lunge with a reach, opening up that hip flexor as well. And then we go into a higher speed karaoke. Then we move into an open the gate, really open up those hips. And then backwards, open the gate, opening up those hips as well. The QL, that low back. And then, of course, we close the gate. So when you're opening the gate, you got to make sure you close the gate as well. And then we get into a nice rhythmic open the gate. Very good for the hips. As you see, we're getting to some higher speed movements as we're moving through the warm up. Then we go to front kicks. Very good for the hamstrings, the hips, some backwards kicks specifically focused on the hips here, some sideways kicks specifically focused on the groin and then some kicks across that body to really work in that low back and the twisting muscles then we go into mobility so we're going to get on the ground we like to do dynamic warm-up first really get some nice blood flow to the muscles you can either do mobility before or after your dynamic warm-up that's your choice so we did some windshield wipers with the hands on the ground then some windshield wipers with the hands off and then we go into some kneeling to squat so as you see a lot of these movements are very good to open up those hips open up those groins which are heavily taxed as a footballer so then we move into some calf pumps also very important very helpful especially if you're doing a lot of ball mastery i notice a lot of footballers have very tight calves the soleus the gastrocnemius so you got to make sure to stretch those out and activate them before the session then we go into some single leg hip rotation very good for the hip rotators very good for the hips like i talked about then we move into a rollover to a straight leg reach 
very good for that lower back, very good for the hamstrings. And then we move into a rollover to wide reach. So really finishing off, really open up that groin, getting ready for the session. And then we finish off with a sprint to get ourselves really activated and ready to go for the session. So now it's time to move on to our ball work. The first exercise we're gonna work on is a roll to stop. So as you're gonna see in this full follow along individual session, we're gonna do each exercise for one minute. Generally what I love to do and what I always tell my clients to do, what we're gonna do within the app is we're gonna work for 30 seconds, really just going at a slow motion, slow pace, getting the technique down. Once we have that technique down, we can start to go at a high pace and high intensity, but there's no use, there's no point to do something at a high pace or high intensity if you don't have the technique down first. So as I always say, please get your technique right, take it very slowly, almost like slow motion, like you're just learning to do the move, like you're just getting in it as a kid, and then once you hit that 30 second mark, you go as quickly as you possibly can at game speed while keeping that technique sharp. Then we move into a Cruyff to outside. So we're really getting into the meat of the session. So like I said before, 30 seconds slowly, really getting, getting the technique down. You take an outside touch using the outside part of the foot near the pinky toe region. And then you're gonna take a touch using the big toe region coming back. So you're chopping that ball, you're crifing that ball behind your leg. This is a very useful move to turn and get out of pressure. And then as we see, we got that guy behind me really watching me, seeing the techers on me, and then, you know, looking at him, looking at me, I mess up a little bit, but it's all right. I always talk about if you mess up, it's absolutely fine. You just keep on going. I like to compare it to a match. If you take a bad touch, if you lose the ball, you're not going to stop. You're going to fix that mistake, and you're going to keep on going. So as I said, that last 30 seconds, we're going at a game intensity as fast as we can while keeping the technique in mind. So as you see here, the body is always over that ball, and we're Cruyffing that ball. Then we move into a Cruyff, a repeated Cruyff, a continuous Cruyff. So it's the same exact skill, but we're not taking an outside touch. So with this move, you got to be very technical. you got to be very sharp very delicate with each and every touch because your touch is going to dictate your next movement. So what you want to do, is you want to crave that ball behind your body, let that ball come across, and then as it's coming across, crave slash chop that ball back. Same technique as before, we're crafting that ball using the inside part of the foot near the big toe, taking a nice, delicate, sharp touch. And as you see here, really lowering that center of gravity, having a nice knee bend so we can go at a high intensity while keeping technique proper. And then as you see there, I got a bit tired and that's when we move on. So we move next into a continuous pullback. So we're using the sole of our foot, just like the continuous Cruyff, we're not taking any extra touches, no outside touches. So you have to make sure your touch is proper every single time. Like I said before with the continuous Cruyff, we're being sharp and delicate, my bad about that squeak, sharp and delicate with the sole part of our foot near the big toe region, near the top of our foot, so we can be really sharp with our touch. I find using the top of your foot, especially your sole, is much better than using the middle because you can be really sharp and delicate with each and every touch. And obviously that is our goal, body over the ball, pulling that ball behind our leg repeatedly. And then we move on to the more advanced, you could say. So we're doing a pull back to outside touch. So same exact technique, using the sole part of the foot to pull that ball under our body, under the standing leg. As you see, we're opening up our hips every time, which is very helpful. And then as soon as we pull that ball under that standing leg, we're immediately taking an outside touch with the outside part of the foot near the pinky toe region. So outside touch, sole outside touch sole and then as i said before once you hit 30 seconds you're going 30 seconds as fast as you can so you're trying to go at a game intensity like you've seen before if you screw up it's fine it's absolutely fine pick that ball up and keep on going because that's the exact same thing that we're going to do in team training and game so we want to emulate that we want to do the same exact thing in, in individual training so we can have those habits nice and sorted right when we go into games and when we go into team training. And then as you see there, once you get tired, once the technique starts screwing up, 
you just stop, you take a rest, and then you move on to the next exercise. Or if you're not happy, you repeat that exercise. So here we're combining all those things that we just worked on. We're combining the Cruyff, we're combining the roll, we're combining the pull behind. So as you see here, we're working a right outside touch, a right Cruyff behind our standing leg, a left outside touch, and a left across. That's one rep. So right outside, right Cruyff, left outside, left roll across the body. That's the reset, and then we repeat. Right outside, using the outside part of the foot near the pinky toe region. Right inside, using the inside part of the foot near the big toe region. Left outside, using the left part of the foot near the pinky toe region. And then left across, using the sole part of the foot, the top of the foot like I talked about, so it can be sharp and intricate. And like I said, that resets you. This is a really excellent one. This is actually one of my favorite ones. So then, of course, we do the same exact thing on the other side. So we're going left outside, left Cruyff, right outside, right pull across. Left outside, left Cruyff, right outside, right pull across. Left outside, left Cruyff, right outside, right pull across. And basically, once you're getting into these movements when you're a beginner, do the same exact thing I'm doing. Talk to yourself. Tell yourself what surface you're working on, and that's really going to help you be focused, be concentrated on each and every rep. And then, as I said, once you get it down, you start going as quickly as you possibly can. So focusing on all these intricate touches, the left outside near the pinky toe region, the right inside near the big toe region to cut that ball, cruyff that ball behind the standing leg, the right outside using the right pinky toe region, and then that right sole rolling that ball across. So as always, really focus on proper technique, try to get the game speed, try to keep that intensity the whole time while keeping technique proper. And then you saw your boy got tired. So now we're moving on to exercise eight. So same type of rhythm here, different techniques, but same exact type of motion. So we're combining all those skills that we worked upon. Like I always say, we start simple and then we get more complex. Most important is proper, sharp, detailed technique. Once we get it down, then we could go at game speed and game intensity. But without the technique, we're getting nowhere. So we're working a right outside, a right pull behind that standing leg, so a pull back, and then a left outside, and then a left across. So the only thing that's changing is we're doing a pull back instead of a Cruyff. So this is a combination skill, right outside, right pull behind the standing leg, left outside, across, and then left roll across that body, which resets the drill. And then as you see here, I have left the screw ups in there because I wanna grant you the ability to screw up. We all screw up. I've left all the raw footage in here. I haven't cut up anything at all, except the dynamic warm up because I know you guys do not like that so much. But everything else I have left in raw. So you can see a real training session of a footballer. So left outside, left pull behind the standing leg, right outside, right pull across body. Left outside, left pull behind leg, right outside, roll across body to reset. So left outside using a pinky toe region, left pull behind using the sole part of the foot on the top of the foot so we can be sharp and delicate, right outside, roll across. And then we're moving on to our next drill, which is slalom dribbling. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna set up about six to 10 cones, about five to 10 shoe lengths apart. So all you do is you measure it with your shoes. This is on you. You choose your distance. If you wanna work on bigger space dribbling, if you wanna work on tighter space dribbling, obviously if you wanna work on bigger space, you're using longer distances. If you wanna work on smaller space, you're using smaller distances. So now we're just using the right part of the foot to cut around these cones, really trying to be quick as possible. And like I said, that first 30 seconds was just slow. And then the last 30 seconds is at game speed. Don't slip, try not to, but this wasn't the best surface actually. So I probably should have used indoors, but I had boots on me. But if, if I was smarter, I would just use indoors because this was a bit of a slippery space. So then we move on to left foot slalom dribbling. So same exact thing, just using the left foot. So as you see here, knees are nicely bent, body over the ball. 
if I was to critique myself, I would say I should be a bit lower. But as you see, I do get a bit lower as I move and turn around the cones. So your goal is to be really sharp and tight around those cones while dribbling with speed in between the cones. So tight around, really nice and sharp, with speed longer touches in between the cones. So for me, I would say these are smaller distances. Next time I want to work on probably longer distances, I would take a little bit more space between the cones. But it was a small little space that I was working on here. So I thought this was the best thing possible for me at that moment, at that day, and especially where I'm at in the season. I want to be covering shorter distances because I'm playing a lot of games, so I don't want to be overdoing it in my training sessions. Then we move into a both feet slalom dribbling drill. If it looks like I'm going slow motion here, I think it is. I think my videographer by accident filmed this in slow motion. If he's listening, brother, you're a great guy. This is not on you. We all make mistakes. But yeah, I, this is the type of slow motion I would want you to go in anyway. So we're moving into both feet slalom dribbling. So now we're trying to get into the higher intensities while being sharper in our cuts. And as I said before, I want you to really take some nice accelerative touches away from those cones and really try to dribble with speed in between those cones and then be as sharp, detailed, and intricate as possible around those turns. So using both feet as you move through this drill, the insides and the outsides of the foot. That's on you, that's your choice. But as I always said, try to bring a high intensity while keeping technique really sharp and proper because the most important thing when working on ball work is proper technique. We're not looking to get fitness out of that. We're looking to get better on the ball and our fitness, our aerobic fitness and sometimes anaerobic fitness will improve depending on what we're working on. But our main goal is technique and to improve on the ball, not to improve our fitness. So think about that. The goal is to be fresh for each and every rep so you can bring high intensity and high quality. So now what we're working on is a roll to a double outside across. So you're rolling across when you hit that cone, taking a double outside touch away. And as you see here, these outside touches are in rhythm, they're in motion. So you're rolling that ball across, immediately taking two outside touches, rolling that ball across, immediately taking outside touches, and it's in a nice rhythm, in a nice fluidity, in the direction that you wanna go. So you see here, as I get to the end of those cones, I'm taking my rest. And as you see here, I'm not moving at the highest speed, I'm moving at a high speed while keeping technique proper because that's my goal. I don't want to be all over the place, start losing the ball, but obviously you want to challenge yourself. So get to a speed where you're comfortable at and then just fly through it. So exercise 14, still on the slalom dribbling, roll inside, outside, roll inside, outside. For me, this is one of my favorites. It gets really nice and rhythmic. So you're rolling that ball across. I bet about all these squeaks, your boy's still going through puberty at 28 years old. So rolling that ball across using the bottom part of the foot, inside touch to kind of caress that ball. And then what you're doing is you're taking outside touch, getting away from your marker. Roll to inside to outside. So you're basically faking the defender, you're faking the marker, like you're going one way and then you're immediately taking that outside touch, accelerating away the other way. So body over that ball, knees nicely bent, roll inside, outside. Roll inside, outside. And then when you're tired, you place that ball in the net. So the next thing we're doing is a slalom dribbling drill, pull to inside. So this is an excellent one to really work on your hip opening, which is very, very useful for footballers. So we can call this functional hip mobility with the ball. We work on our hip mobility in our dynamic warm up, and then we work on it in our seated mobility drills, in our standing mobility drills. Now we get into some dynamic mobility with the ball, which is game realistic. So as we get to the cone, we're pulling that ball. I want to think, I want you to think of pulling that ball into your body aggressively with pace and then you're immediately taking an inside touch, opening up your body. Pull inside, pull inside, pull inside. Like I said, as you hit that cone, say it to yourself. Pull inside open, pull inside open. It really helps you, especially if you're a beginner. So basically what you're doing is you're using the foot that's closest to the cone, as you see. So you're pulling that ball 
intensely inside open, taking two outside touches away, and then you move into the next rep. So now we're moving into some wall work, exercise 16. Some one touch inside using both feet. And as you see here, as I said to my videographer, as he said to me, the wall isn't the best. The ball does not bounce off the wall properly. It doesn't come back nicely. I'm sure some of your teammates pass you the ball like this, so it's a good place to work on it. But one thing that I have really gotten into, like I've told you within the app, like I tell you all over my social media, is you got to do the best with what you have. Do what you can where you are with what you have. And that's always the goal. So you got to make the best of what you got. So that's what we're doing here. That's, that's the way that you're going to get better. You're not going to get better if you're constantly looking for perfect fields, perfect places to train. The way that you're going to get better is doing things consistently over time. And this type of stuff actually makes you better. I actually have a client right now in Uruguay who told me that all they do is they play on crappy fields, but the players are so good, so technically good that they don't make any mistakes at all. So it's about curating your environment to making you the best player possible. So now we're moving into some left inside the foot, one touch pass off the wall. And as you see here, that leg is at about 90 degrees. Those toes are pointed up. That sole is in parallel to the ground. So we could hit a nice clean ball off of the wall. And then when you wanna do it, look over your shoulder. You don't need to do it, but when you wanna do it, do it. Like I always say, the most important thing here is to improve your technique. We're not looking to work on your awareness right now. Our goal is to improve your technique and how you pass the ball. When you wanna integrate awareness, you can do that. But I think that's best to do with a partner. When you're working by yourself, I think it's best to focus on one element, really focus on your technique. And when you have a partner, you can make it more advanced do that so then we move into some left inside two touch balancing so your goal is to balance on that right leg take a nice left inside the foot touch with the inside part of your foot near the big toe region and then you're immediately passing that ball back so you're trying to stay balanced on that other leg the entire time as you see your body is over the ball same exact technique with the passing like we talked about before and what you're trying to do is you're really trying to focus on a nice clean touch with the inside part of the foot so you can immediately go in to your next touch. So like I said before, for these drills, you can go for about a minute or two minutes on each drill. So now we're gonna work on some alternating footwork. So a right foot touch to a left foot pass, a right foot touch to a left foot pass. And as you see here, if you notice, most of the time, my knees are nicely bent. I'm in a nice athletic position the entire time, and that's the goal. You wanna be well-balanced, well-distributed in your weights. So you can have your center of mass over the ball, which is gonna help you in matches protect that ball. So now we're moving on to a left touch to a right pass. Left touch to a right pass. Two touch, alternating foot, left touch to right pass. Body over the ball the entire time playing that ball with nice pace as you get into it. So as I talked about in the ball mastery module, you want to start slowly for the first 30 seconds. And then when you have it down, the goal is to challenge yourself. So you're trying to play that ball as hard as you can off of that wall. And then as it comes back to you, you're taking a nice touch and repeating. So here we can see the beautiful wall bouncing it off nicely. We're moving into some one touch long with the right foot. Very, very useful drill, very game realistic. This is gonna be very useful for any position you play. As I always talk about, you can do as many tricks, as many skills, as many Instagram and TikTok famous reels, viral stuff, but the most important thing is the basics. You just gotta master the basics, the one touch the two touch with both feet, clean reps. And this is how you do it. It may be boring, but it's gonna get you better. And when you get better, when you get more confident as a player, the game's gonna become more fun. Yeah, it might be fun, it might be enjoyable, might give you a nice quick hit of dopamine to train skills, to train tricks, which is absolutely fine once in a while. I'm not saying not to do that. I think it gets you nice and comfortable on the ball. 
But the main goal as a footballer is to work on the things that are going to make you better on the pitch. And when you become better on the pitch, the games are going to become more fun because you're going to be a more useful asset to your team. And when you become a more useful asset to your team, you're going to play more games. And that's our goal. You want to play more games so you can get up the ranks, whatever you want to do, play on your A team, play college ball, play pro ball. The most important thing is playing games. And you do that by becoming a better player. So now we're doing one touch long using both feet, same technique as before, body over that ball, ankle nice and locked, sole in parallel to the ground, leg at about 90 degrees, following through nicely with that foot. So as you see here, really just judging the weight of the ball as the ball comes back to me, that's the goal. So based on where you're working, you're gonna have to be the judge of that. And like I said before, change the perspective, really flip the switch on this. The touch back might not be the best, but just say to yourself, all right, when I get on a nice turf pitch or a nice graph pitch and I'm training with good players, my touch is going to be immaculate. And people are going to look at you and be like, where you been working, buddy? You tell them, I've been working. I've been working in the dark. Don't worry about me, homie. Next thing we're going to move into, exercise 27, is a two-touch long inside using the right foot. This is an excellent drill for any player but especially if you play in the midfield or especially if you play in the back and if your team likes to play football, this is gonna be very important. Being able to play that ball through the lines, through the defensive lines, into your midfielders in those pockets is very valuable. And here's where you improve it. Here's where you improve your technique. Here's where you improve the strength of your pass while keeping the technique proper. So all you're gonna do, as I said before, same technique as always. We're gonna keep that body over that ball. We're gonna pass that ball using the inside part of the foot in the middle of our foot. So if you have Nike boots, you really should have them. You should not have Adidas. You should not have Puma. You should not have Mizuno. I'm not sponsored, but Nike, if you're listening to this, sponsor your boy. I love your guys' stuff. So you're hitting that ball in the inside part of the foot, in the middle part of the foot, where the start of that Nike sign is actually where the end is. So you're using the inside part of the foot, striking through that ball cleanly, hitting the ball in the middle part of the ball. You're trying to aim on one spot on the ball the entire time, one spot on the wall, and then taking a nice touch and playing that ball off of the wall. I don't care as much about your first touch as the ball comes off of the wall there. I care more about the technique, the intensity and speed of that ball. So then we move into an inside lace so as you see here, one touch using the inside, one touch using the lace. And as I said before, not the best wall, not bouncing back properly. You see your boy Ricky getting angry at himself. I don't know if I'm angry at myself. I don't know if I'm angry at the wall. I don't know if I'm angry at the place, but whatever. We're getting it in, homies. So inside lace, inside lace, body over that ball. When you hit the ball with the inside, body's over the ball. When you hit the ball with the lace, the body is over that ball. The knee is slightly bent. The knee is over that ball. The knee is straight over that ball in the direction you want to go. And you're hitting the ball with the lace. Try to keep that ball on the ground. Believe it or not, this is going to really improve your lace passing because it improves your technique. It really initiates the technique of the lace, having a nice locked ankle, toe down, ankle strong, body over that ball, knee over that ball, which is gonna improve your lace touch. So we're making the most of what we got here, hitting that ball cleanly with the inside part of the foot, hitting the ball as cleanly as possible with the lace part of the foot while balancing nicely on that right leg. This is mainly a technique drill. So if the wall isn't so good, you don't need to hit it so hard, so intensely off the wall. Just focus on proper technique with the inside part of the foot and the lace part of your foot. And as that ball comes back, time it nicely and have that body over the ball. Next exercise we're going into is the same exact thing, but we're going to be alternating our feet. So it's going to be a right inside, right lace, left inside, left lace. And as I said before, for these wall drills, you can go for about a minute to two minutes, just keeping that technique clean. Here, all about reps. We're just about clean quality reps the entire time, which is going to help improve your technique when you go into team training and when you go into matches. Believe it or not, passing is probably the most important skill as a footballer because that's what you're doing with your teammates. You're passing them the ball. So really being able to have this technique sound is gonna really help you get up the ladder as a footballer, I promise you that. 
Then we move into some outside the foot passes using the right foot. This is something that I want to work on that I've been trying to work on this year actually at 28 years old. Yeah, I know I'm an old man. Don't make fun of me, homies. But to be honest with you, it's probably the best form I've ever been in, the best I've ever felt. So as I always say, age is just a number. People bloom at different ages. So this is something that I wanted to work on because I was, you know, analyzing a game for myself and there was two or three situations where I had the ball on a fast break and I should have used the outside of my foot. I did for one of them and the ball wasn't as strong as I would have liked. I used it again and the ball was a little inaccurate and then another time I used another service of my foot. So I had three incompleted passes, maybe two to three if I'm being hard on myself. Incompleted passes that should have been better, that could have led to a goal scoring opportunity for my team. So like I always say, once you analyze your game and you see where your weaknesses are, you work on those. Obviously you work on your strengths as well, but if those weaknesses are holding you back a little bit, you work on them. So. I thought it was holding me back, wasn't making me the best player possible, so I've been working on it at least two, three times a week, some outside the football, so expect to see that from your boy next season. Then we go into some lace-driven passes. This is actually probably one of my, if not my best strength, but I'm still working on it. Like I said before with the inside the foot pass, I don't care about your first touch as the ball comes off. Obviously, we want to have a good first touch and prepare for our next driven pass, but I care mostly about the technique here. So all we're doing, it's the same technique we had when we were doing the one touch lace. So body is over that ball, toes are pointed down, ankle is locked, we're striking through that ball, that knee is over the ball, knees are slightly bent, and you're striking through that ball with the lace part of your foot, hitting the ball through the center part of the ball. If you want the ball to be driven you got to have your body over it more and if you want to have it higher you're going to have to clip underneath it more so this is a, another ball that i really love some low curls using the right foot so this is an excellent ball if you play as a cdm number six if you play as a 10 or if you play as a fullback or even a center back so it's a curled ball you're just looking to curl that ball on the ground, and this is an excellent ball that you would play into one of your teammates who's making a run in behind the back line. So, for example, if you think, if you're playing as a right fullback, you're curling this ball around the opposition's center back into your forward. Really useful ball. Now we're moving into some aerial control, some juggling. Please, please listen to me. Do not underestimate the skill of juggling. It's probably one of the best things that you could do, especially when you're training alone, to improve every single aspect of your technique. So this technique here, the front spin right juggle, is gonna help you with your drives, like we were working on before in the wall. It's gonna help you with your shooting. It's gonna help you with all aspects of your passing. So please do not underestimate this. The way we're doing this is we're having that ankle locked we're having those toes pointed down, a very slight knee bend. So as you see, similar technique to that drive, almost the same exact technique. We're just getting a lot of repetitions without stressing your hip flexor, without overstressing your groin. So this you can do about 50 to 100 reps, work for about a minute to two minutes on each and not overdo it. So you're trying to front spin that ball the entire time, ankle is locked and the toes are pointed down and you're hitting that ball with the lace the entire time. Now we're moving on to some inside the foot juggle, also very underrated. It's gonna help your comfort, gonna help your confidence on the ball. It's gonna make you more fluid in your football. It's just gonna make you a better player. I really promise you it will. I'm not talking BS here, I'm talking the truth, homies. Do it repeatedly, consistently over time with good quality reps, focus on technique, and I promise you, you will improve. So as you see here, your leg is at 90 degrees, basically, that foot is going above that opposite knee, so you're gonna have to have good hip mobility here. And then you're hitting the ball with the inside part of the foot and the middle part of the foot, just like we did with the inside the foot pass. That ankle is nice and locked, sole is parallel. And like I said, if you drop the ball, you just pick it up and you keep on going. And if you're a beginner here, all you're gonna do, I'm gonna have this in my app for regressions to help you as a beginner, but all you're gonna do is you're gonna take one inside the foot juggle, catch it, then move into two, then move into three, and then progress as you wish. So then we're gonna move into some both-footed juggling. So 
Same exact thing, concentrating on that front spin. And like I said before, if the ball backspins, if the ball drops, no big deal. Pick that ball up and just keep on going. As always with any aerial control drill, you're going to focus on one spot on the ball the entire time. And you're trying to hit it on one spot on your foot. So here we're working on our lace. Like I said, toes are pointed down, ankle is locked, and we're front spinning that ball every single time. Then we're moving to some inside juggles using both of our feet. So same exact technique like before. I want to talk really quick to you beginners. If you're a beginner, very simple. Take two juggles, catch it. Take four juggles, catch it. Take six juggles, catch it. Take eight juggles, catch it. Up to 20 and then back down. And I promise you over time, you will be able to do it without your hands. But the goal is to simplify it and then make it harder. So look, I'm doing it here actually because this is something I'm working on myself. A lace inside to outside and I'm catching it. Lace inside to outside and I'm catching it. And as you get better, you take away those hands. But it's all about taking gradual progression. Whether you're on the pitch or whether you're in the gym, it's about slight progression over time. So it's lace inside, outside. Lace inside outside and like i said when you get better you don't have to catch the ball but we're just focused on proper technique here trying to front spin with the lace inside the cushion outside that outside the foot one is tough it's going to really require a lot of hip mobility and fluidity so same exact thing with left foot i struggle with this more because this is quote my weak foot but i would say it's actually almost as good or maybe better than my strong foot in most aspects so same exact thing lace inside outside catch lace inside outside catch and once i think i have that technique down i'm taking away the hands yeah i know i have a weird motion when i inside the foot that ball i don't know what's going on with my hands like i'm holding the baby or something yo buddy ricky you're not having a baby yet bro maybe a couple of years but take it easy all right bro now we're moving into some foot thigh using the right foot as always right foot is locked toe is pointed down using the lace part of our foot and then we're cushioning the ball with our thigh lace thigh lace thigh lace thigh then of course we move into the left foot this is also another thing we can take regressions so if you're not as good this is hard especially with your weak foot in the beginning so just catch the ball go one two three four go up to ten come back down and then try it without your hands but as always just trying to keep our eyes on the ball. Ma main thing here with aerial control is just focus. So then we go into some right foot double thigh. Right foot double thigh. So lace part of our foot. Toes are pointed down. Hitting the ball nicely. Right thigh to left thigh. Right lace. Right thigh to left thigh. Right lace. Right thigh to left thigh. Then we move into left foot. Left foot. Left thigh to right thigh. Left foot. Left thigh to right thigh. And as I said before, just focusing on one spot on the ball the entire time, one spot of your foot the entire time, and just trying to be nice and technical. Then we move into a spin juggle plus a chest touch. So this is the simple part of the drill. We're going to move into something more complex at the end. So all you're doing is juggling the ball with a backspin. No need for a front spin here. And then when you're ready, you're going to pop that ball up. So when you pop that ball up, you're going to work on that front spin. And then you're just going to chest that ball down. So really open up those hands, create a nice platform for your chest pop that ball up take it down and continue juggling so now we're moving into some high low juggling for me one of my favorite aerial control drills so all you're doing is backspin juggling the ball and then when you're ready you're popping that ball up you're starting first using the right lace to take it down the left lace to take it down and then you're going to move into the right inside and the left inside so think about the same exact concepts we've been talking about throughout lock that ankle really create a nice surface to take that ball down with and then continue juggling. Then you're gonna move into the right thigh and then you're gonna move into the left thigh. What I want you to think about when you're taking down this ball and when you're juggling in general, I told this to a client I was training this weekend in Boston, is you wanna be gentle with the ball. Don't be so aggressive with the ball. Love the ball and the ball will love you. It may be hippy dippy, but I promise you, it works when you're gentle with the ball it will serve you well and then that last touch is a chest and then a header and we finish off with <clears throat> some core work so 
I'm just showing you a couple exercises here. You can do these exercises for 30 seconds to 90 seconds. Most importantly, as I always talk about, I want you to really focus on proper technique. And if you have any lower back pain, any pain anyway, anywhere, you stop this immediately. So we started off with shoulder taps, very good for core stability. Then we go into an up down plank or a push up to planks. Your goal here is to keep those hips level the entire time, not let them shift all around. So keep the core stable the entire time. Then we move into some plank rocks. So you're moving back and forth. This is gonna really work your obliques, your rectus abdominis, which is your six pack, six pack abs as well as your lower abs and as well as your hip flexors and it's going to stretch out those calves nicely going to work the calves a little bit so just move fluidly and breathe through the motion the entire time so we're staying in this plank then we're going to do some sideways toe taps so like i said <clears throat> you want to keep that lower abs you want to keep the pelvis engaged so the lower back doesn't cave in so what you want to do is like you're trying to take a poop but of course don't let it out that's going to keep that core engaged and locked in next thing we're going to do is we're going to do some alternating arm lifts so as you see here staying stable on the arms then we move into some alternating leg lifts which is also going to activate the low back activate the glutes but most importantly is we're staying stable in the core and not swaying it one way or the other next thing we move into is a rolling plank so as you see here you're going to move through those arms it's going to really work your side abs your obliques and as always move through this movement breathe in and out through your nose and like i said if you feel any sharp pain stop immediately and the boy is tired as you saw and this is the last exercise of the day some plank push-ups i hope you really enjoyed this full follow along individual football session this is an exact session that i took from my rick fit app so if you're interested in that make sure you head over to the website i will put that in the description below i will talk about it in the conclusion but thank you so much for being here much love once again, thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate your support. I wouldn't be where I am today without you, so I wanna thank you for that. If you liked the video, please hit that like button. Please drop a comment. Let me know what your favorite exercise was. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and share this video with your teammates because me and you both know this video, this workout will improve any player, no matter of their level. And make sure you stay tuned because the RickFit Academy app is coming out very soon. If you want to improve yourself as a footballer, this is the app for you. See you next time. Have a great rest of the day. Deuces.